And now for the excellence in New South Wales journalism, outstanding radio current affairs reporting. And the nominees, Sarah Dingle, ABC Radio National, John Stanley and Gary Linnell, 2UE. And Catherine Clifford, ABC Tamworth. And the winner is Sarah Dingle, ABC Radio National. On Radio National's background briefing program, Sarah Dingle shone a light onto the issue of sexual abuse in the family home. Criminologist and psychologist Professor Stephen Smallbone says the family home is by far the most common location for children to be sexually abused. I think in around 70 to 80 percent of cases, the relationship between the offender and the victim is a familial relationship of some kind. Thank you very much. Um, look, uh, my story was about a, a quite an unpalatable topic, which is child sexual abuse in the home. Um, and those kind of stories always rely on the people who are generous enough to speak to you. So I, I'm heavily indebted to my talent for being brave enough and honest enough to talk to me about what happened to them. And obviously the team at Background Briefing for helping me through the process, and finally to my partner Sam, because as journalists we have the satisfaction of publication. We publish and it's done, and our partners just have to listen to us. So, thank you. And the award for the outstanding radio commentator, nominees, Ray Hadley, 2GB, John Stanley, 2UE, and Gary Linnell, 2UE. And the winner is John Stanley. The judges describe John Stanley's commentary as forensic, succinct, unambiguous and strong. I think every single person in New South Wales has reason to be absolutely disgusted and outraged by these people. These shonks who've set this stuff up, organised themselves a pipeline of public money into their pockets. It's just disgraceful. In just a few seconds he can catch her listener attention and leave them in absolutely no doubt as to what he thinks and why. Thanks very much for this. Uh, I'd just like to thank TUE for giving me the privilege of having a microphone in Sydney, which is uh, something I uh, never take for granted. It's wonderful being a commentator in this town. I'd also like to thank all the people in this room, because if, you are a if you're a commentator on current affairs, you're talking about the stories that you produce, and we've got such a vibrant community of journalists in this town. I'd also like to thank the Kennedy Awards for giving us a, a great opportunity to celebrate journalism. And also, as someone who's come to Randwick so often through my life, for giving me one of the rare occasions I'm walking out of Randwick with more than I came in with. Thank you. Bob and I started our careers in the photographic section of John Fairfax and Sons in, as 15-year-old copy boys in 1964, believe it or not. So Bob, Bob stayed with Fairfax and I moved to News Limited. Uh, but here we are 50 years later, virtually to the day. Um, still great mates with a lifetime of memories and stories from an industry we both love and we're proud to be part of. Uh, from the standard of entries put before us this year, our industry is in good hands. Um, have a great night together and enjoy the company of your mates. Now, the nominees for outstanding news photo photography are Sam Rutten from the Sunday Telegraph, Craig Greenhill from the Daily Telegraph, and Dallas Kilpone from the Sydney Morning Herald. And the winner is Craig Greenhill, Daily Telegraph. Craig Greenhill's powerful image of Roger Rogerson arriving at court in a police van stripped away the media-friendly facade that Roger had cultivated for years and showed a chilling demeanour that lies beneath. 
Having chased many such vans in their careers, the judges knew how challenging this shot was to capture. One describing the pick as nothing short of miraculous on one of the giant Sydney stories of the year. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Uh, I'd just like to say, Adam Waters, mate, you've done an awesome effort putting this show together, third year in a row. He's over there on his computer. His stress levels are pretty high at the moment, but he's done a magic job. So everyone congratulate him. I'd like to say good on you, Daily Telegraph and Sunday Telegraph photographers who are on this day to get this photo. There was uh, probably, I don't know, 10 of us that were assigned to every police station around Sydney, and uh, I just got the lucky shot. The, the picture editor, Brian Roberts, said, the best photo gets a case of beer. And I said, all right, I'll take you up on that. A case of rum, and it's mine. And I got this. I still haven't seen any rum, but thank you very much. <laughs> Outstanding portrait for the year. The nominees are Jane Dyson, St George and Sutherland Shire Leader. Uh, Addison Hamilton, the Daily Advertiser Wagga. And Kirk Gilmore, the Illawarra Mercury. And the winner is... This was a great picture. Addison Hamilton. From the Addison Hamilton's thoughtful Daily study Advertiser. of Charlie McCartney proved that great causes can create great portraits. He captured the only woman among her avionics crew to shave her head in support of a colleague suffering leukaemia. Yeah, I must say I'm very uh, honoured to be up here to win this award. Um, especially the contestants I was up against, Jane, that was a fantastic photo. And um, I remember as a young fella growing up in Wollongong, I used to look up to Kirk Gilmore quite a bit in all of his photos. And um, it's, it's quite humbling to be up here against him. And uh, yeah, I must say, yeah, thanks. So, Outstanding online photographic essay, and the nominees are... Janie Barrett from the Sydney Morning Herald. Mike Bowers from the Globe, the Global Mail. Alex, Alex Housen and Andrew Mears, Fairfax. And the winner is Janie Barrett of the Sydney Morning Herald. For the second year in a row, Janie Barrett has shown her dedication and patience, producing an outstanding example of the modern photo essay. Janie has used all the tools of the digital era, photography, video and audio, to great effect in the telling of this very moving online story. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Again, it's a, it's a fabulous honour, it's wonderful. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone I worked with at Fairfax and in particular the journalists and the other photographers who are always generous with their knowledge to all the younger people, not that I'm one of the younger ones, but you know, for the newer ones, they've shared everything very generously over the years. Cheers. Thank you. Good evening, and I uh, haven't been involved in the judging in, in some way over each of the last three years. One of the wonderful things has been seeing how much the, uh, the standard of the entries and the competitiveness has, uh, has gone up each year. So. Um, that's a great credit to, I think, all of the organisers, the Kennedys, and, and Adam in particular. So the, nominee, the nominees for Outstanding Online Video are the Illawarra Mercury Photographic Team, Tony Waters of the Sydney Morning Herald, and Amanda Ho of Fairfax Media. And the winner is Tony Waters, Sydney Morning Herald. Tony Walters has used moving vision with fascinating characters in his interviews to tell a great David and Goliath struggle over housing in Miller's Point. It's just like being on death row here, just waiting for the bad result. Uh, 95. Why would I want to leave? In this battle, Goliath is winning, some of the housing is up for sale. But Tony's story showed the spirit of the vanquished will never be defeated. I'm not actually Tony Waters with smoother hair. I'm Judith Whelan, the news director of the Sydney Morning Herald, and accepting it on Tony's behalf. He couldn't be here tonight. 
Um, it's a really well-deserved award. Tony is a great storyteller on video um, and a linchpin in our newsroom. And I'm sure that he would also want to thank for this award Sun Herald journalist Tim Barlas, who worked on this very moving piece with him. So thanks. A little bit like the Kennedy Awards, the world's best tennis players battle all year long to earn their place at the season-ending Barclays ATP World Tour Finals in London. I am so pleased that the winner of this award will have the opportunity to fly to London and witness this spectacular event. The nominees are Brett Costello from The Daily Telegraph, Dylan Robinson from the Border Mail, and Philip Hilliard from the Daily Telegraph. And the winner is Philip Hilliard from the Daily Telegraph. A memorable behind the scenes moment captured by Phil Hilliard as captain and coach toast the clean sweep in the recent Ashes series. Words are not needed to explain the feeling of the architects who unraveled the old enemy with such relentless humiliation. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks to the Kennedys, um, to NRMA, but also to ATP World Tour for a pretty uh, generous award, which I, I didn't know existed, actually. So um, thank you very much. Uh, to my employer news, uh, to the editors and sports editors and the subs that um, give me the freedom to produce the kind of work that I do. Um, also to the cricket team, uh, I spent many years travelling with those guys who have put up with me and allowed me uh, sort of into their inner sanctum. Um, but also to our colleagues that make it such a fun profession to work in. Thanks. <laughs> 